I love Christmas morning. I love gathering as our family here on Christmas morning. It's, it's a bit more relaxed. Uh, it's a bit quicker. I promise I won't go on too long. Uh, but it's, what I like seeing is when the children come out and they bring their gifts and we see all their different personalities and how they interact and some are chatty and some not so chatty. But we always have a good time as we, we watch as they show the gifts that they've got. Giving and receiving presents is good no matter how old you are, whether you're little or whether you're big. We've got to go home and open some of ours. Uh, we just didn't have time uh, this morning. But it's good to give and receive gifts. I think it is better to give than receive. It's nice to get stuff, but it's good to see the faces of your loved ones when they, they open the gifts that you've purchased for them, even if we did buy them together um, and got a good deal through duty free or whatever. But we must never forget that we give gifts at Christmas because we remember the greatest gift of all, that God gave Jesus for us. And this gift of God, Jesus, as we think about the gift that God has given, it's a bit like thinking about a diamond. It's multifaceted. You look, you look at Jesus and you see one thing and then you look at him again and you see another and you can go throughout your whole life and every time you look at Jesus, you can see a different aspect of that precious gift that God has given. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 15, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. How do you describe Jesus? Well, this morning I want to pick out just a few things based around our Advent themes and our, our candles. The first candle that we lit was the candle of hope, a reminder of the gift of Jesus who is hope for the hopeless. When there's nowhere else to turn and no one else to turn to, Jesus is there for each of us. When it seems that everything is going wrong when it seems that God is on mute and we're praying and we're asking and we're crying out and we hear nothing we can remember that Jesus was the long hoped for Messiah as we said last night from Isaiah and Micah prophesying that Emmanuel God with us would come it was 700 years before he came. So Jesus is hope for the hopeless because God always does what he says. He honors his word and so we can have hope. The second candle was that of love because Jesus is love for the loveless. Some people ask the question, how can anybody love me? Our society tells us the lie that we can only be loved if we look good, if we've got money, if we've got the best job and we've got position and power. Think about it. We look for the, the best celebrity, the best, you know, it's not always the best dancer, is it? It's sometimes the one who's got it all together more than everybody else. The lie tells us if you've got the latest fashion, the latest look, the perfect teeth, you live in the right place and have loads of money, that's what it takes to be loved. But Jesus comes for people who haven't got it all together. The people with crooked teeth, with no teeth. For the people who live in the wrong places, who don't live in the nice, leafy, 
lanes of South Manchester or the south of England, but in the terraces and the flats of Farmworth. Jesus came for the lost, the least, and the broken. He came for ordinary people, people like me and people like you. He is love. And the third thing, the third candle, was the candle of joy. And Jesus is joy for the sorrowful. Now, joy is different than happiness. You know, we measure, and the government measure the, the, the health of the country based on how happy people are. I can tell you, if you're basing it on how happy you are, you know, if you're a Manchester United supporter, you're not very happy at the moment. It has nothing to do with a government. It's nothing to do with life, is it? It's just, it's just not running well for them. You know, if you're a Liverpool supporter, then you're not happy because of VAR. You know, these things don't make you happy. When we're grieving, we're not happy. When we're sick and in pain, we're not happy. But the thing is, through all those things, we don't have to be happy to have joy. Joy is something that is beyond happiness. Joy is something about knowing that no matter what is going on, God is present. God cares. He's faithful. And he's going to bring us through whatever tough time we're having. We can have joy despite our sadness, our grief, our pain and our mourning. The fourth candle was the candle of peace. And Jesus is peace for the anxious. Yesterday morning I said that peace is not the absence of war. Peace is that shalom peace of God. That stillness in his presence. When all around you is in turmoil. This afternoon. You know, when you're full of turkey. When the presents are all over the floor. When someone gets up and treads on that favorite toy and there are tears amidst all that turmoil, even with Jesus, there can be peace. There can be peace because God offers his shalom. It's not about what's going on around us. It's what's going on within us. And these are great gifts that God has given to us. But to get them... We do, it's no good if we just stand with the present and we don't know what it is. We have to open it to reveal what that present is. The greatest gift of all, above the love, the joy, the hope and the peace, is Jesus Christ himself. We've been reading throughout Advent and we've been looking at Luke's gospel and that word you shall call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins his name is who he is names are important it's who he is Jesus the Hebrew will be Yeshua, literally means God saves. God saves. I think everyone wants a perfect life. We want a perfect life. We want that life full of joy, full of happiness. But, you know, life is a bit like Christmas. We're led to believe that it's going to be so much better than the reality. You know, you're all perhaps looking forward to Christmas dinner. You know, how well will the table be dressed? Will the tree be right? Will the turkey be cooked well? 
will the sprouts be good? The answer to that is no. Nobody really likes sprouts. <laughs> well, some of us do. <laughs> but we have all this hype. You see the movies. Christmases are meant to be perfect. But we actually like those Christmas movies like Home Alone, where it all goes wrong. Because actually, it's never absolutely perfect, is it? Because we're involved. And it's not perfect, but it is still a time of joy. Life is like Christmas. Life has its problems. Life isn't what the movies tell us it is, what Facebook tells us life is. We do, it doesn't live up to our hype and expectation. Life has problems. And how do we deal with it? Well, some people deal, it, deal with it through partying, through drugs, through hedonism, through shopping. And some people even try religion. But none of those things can ever make life on earth like life in heaven. You see, the problem with all of those things is they end up making us feel guilty. You know, I drunk too much. I ate too much. I did too much of this. Or, in the case of religion, I didn't pray enough. I didn't read my Bible enough. I didn't go to church enough. I didn't serve enough. I didn't do enough. But that's not the good news of the gift of Jesus. The good news of the gift of Jesus is God came down and made his dwelling with us. We're imperfect people, but perfection came. He came to save all people. He came to save all people from their sins. He didn't come because we were perfect. He didn't come because we were worthy. He was the perfect lamb ready for sacrifice. That's what the swaddling clothes were about. You see, Jesus came not for things like a manger, and the story. But the story goes on to the cross. You see, the story that begins in a manger ends at the cross. And it's for all this good news. It's for those who are not good enough. It's for those who are not religious enough. It's for those who are trying every which way to sort their life out, and it still isn't right. I want to tell you the good news. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. If you were the only person in the world, Jesus would have still come. And he would have still lived and died for you. The thing with gifts, we have to unwrap them. And we have to unwrap the gift of Jesus by faith. And faith isn't just something that happens up here. It's not about understanding. And sometimes you will never understand what Jesus has done for you. That's most Bible scholars, and they'll tell you, and most pastors, they will tell you the more they study, the more they don't understand. Because He's indescribable. But you have to take the gift and unwrap it by faith. And that's daring to take God at his word. It's daring to believe that God could love me. It's daring to believe that God is delighted in me. Not just by saying, yes, I'm going to believe, but living that belief. Trusting that every good gift is from God, that he loves us and values us, not 
for what we can do, but for who we are. But we have to unwrap the gift. The gift of gold. Here's the gift of gold. Actually, it's pretty pointless because it's not really gold, is it? It's chocolate coins wrapped in gold-colored foil. That's not much of a gift, is it? And if it stays here, is it any good? But to receive that gift, you've got to take it and unwrap it. So Helen's going to come round. Because what you see in that gold coin, when you take it, when you unwrap it, and when you put it in your mouth, you taste and see that it's good. And that's like faith. The Bible tells us to taste and see that God is good. I think some people, even here this morning, might know they've received the gift of Jesus. But you haven't genuinely unwrapped the gift. And like the little ones over here doing, playing with the gift. Jesus is a gift that is meant to be unwrapped. He's meant to be used. He's meant to be played with. He's meant to be enjoyed. Are you still sat there this morning thinking, but I'm not good enough? I'm not good enough. You are. You are good enough because... The good news is, none of us are good enough, but Jesus is good enough. He's good enough for all of us. We don't need to be good. The most famous Bible verse, John 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. He loved the world. He loves you, you're in the world. He loves you. Apostle Paul wrote that whilst we were sinners, Christ died for us. Doesn't matter that you're not perfect. Stop leaving the gift unwrapped on the side because you don't feel good enough. Some of you this Christmas need to make some decisions. You need to decide for Jesus. For some of you who already say, well, I believe in Jesus, you need to take the next step. We have a baptism pool. There are some people in this place today who need to take that step of unwrapping Jesus and being baptized. There are some of you that have done that, but you need to take the next step and you need to ask about church membership because you're good enough to be part of the family, to be adopted in, not to sit on the edge. And there are some of you who maybe need to know more about this Jesus and ask some questions. And in the new year, on Tuesday the 9th of January in the evening we start in an alpha and you can ask those questions so I just want to encourage you this morning don't leave the present unwrapped Jesus is meant to be enjoyed and he is for life not just for Christmas